Hey guys, Adam back here in the AeroWorks workshop. And where the heck have I been for the last two and a half, three weeks? Well, uh, the good old COVID struck the household. And uh, when you got six kids and a wife and everybody gets COVID, things come to a halt in life. And if you've had it or have not had it, let me tell you, it's not fun. Uh, all the kids are doing great. Wife's doing okay now. I had the worst of it. Uh, started about two weeks ago uh, and uh, went through all the symptoms. Not going to drag it on and talk about all of that, but uh, not a fun thing. Uh, this is the first day or two. Yesterday was the first day I was able to get back out in the shop and actually feel motivated enough to do anything. So just wanted to give you a quick update. That's what's been going on. Not going to talk about that too much. We're going to keep it positive here on the AeroWorks work space, work Whatever, whatever this is called. Anyways, I know a lot of you guys have been waiting on uh, some progress updates. I'm going to give you some of those today. Um, I did pop out my tanks because I'm sending these out to the welder tomorrow to get the uh, fuel transducer uh, bungs welded in. So I've got those laid out for him. We'll be showing you a little bit of that. I did get the full uh, fuel system from AS Flight Lines, uh, Steve over there. Uh, who made up all those custom fuel lines for us for the Super Duty and using the header tank and all that. So I know there's some of you have been waiting on that. We're going to be diving into all the parts and pieces. Finishing up the brake line assembly and the fuel lines is something that we're definitely working on. I do want to show you what I've been doing with the engine, kind of how I've been laying that out. I've been really taking my time with that because, you know, you're, you're trying to figure out where to mount things and not block other things. And it's just kind of been a slow process. You know, first time doing it, just trying to trying to lay things out uh, the way that I think it makes the most sense. So I'm going to stop the camera here. We're going to jump over to the engine and I'll show you kind of where we're at with that. Give you a quick update on that. And then uh, we'll proceed on with some of the other things I know you guys have been waiting on. So appreciate you guys hanging in there while I took a little leave of absence there for a couple, three weeks. Uh, I do, uh, I'm still thinking about doing another live session. If you guys want to do that, uh, definitely leave a comment down below. I'm trying to hit those on like a Saturday night when people are home. Uh, just kind of open it up, open it up, take you around the plane, ask questions, shoot out the comments, whatever you want to do. Uh, it's just a way for you to kind of stay involved in the project. So again, Adam from Arrow Works, let's get into uh, what we've been doing on the engine. All right, so let's take a look at the uh, battery shelf here. We've got most of the components installed. I've got basically the two battery solenoids. Uh, I've got a... a, a positive bus bar here. This is going to be engine uh, ECU specific only. So this is only going to be powering the ECU. You see then I've got a 30 amp breaker that's going to jump over and provide aircraft power, which is outside of where the ECU power. So if anything goes bad inside the cockpit, we're not going to be losing power to the aircraft uh, ECU. We've got our batteries here. We've got our positive leads coming in. And uh, we'll jump over here to the other side real quick, and then we'll go into some of the engine components. On this side, you can see here I've got my pass-throughs, got my Adele clamps here, bringing down the negative to the negative bus bar. And of course, we'll be going into all this as we get connecting, interconnecting everything up. Um, starter relay goes here, and then of course I have a complete shelf that goes here where we'll be mounting more components on. Uh, on the firewall side, <clears throat> I've already started doing uh, cabling, uh, specifically, we talked about some of these sensors before, gearbox sensor, uh, temperature sensors, intercooler sensors, um, those are all in place. Started laying out, now, now this is not, you know, secure down yet or anything, this is our starter cable, and you can see here that I'm using the um, fiberglass abrasion protection shield. This has like a 1500 degree rating. This will all be tucked up real nice and tight. Um, I decided to go with the uh, Dynon alternator amp shunt bar here, which is right here. Originally, I was going to come off of the positive lug with a uh, wire back to the alternator. Um, that way, the alternator, when I uh, turn on the alternator, it would actually energize power back through the battery cable and charge the batteries, but we're going to actually do that separately. So I have a dedicated wire right here that will be coming up, going to the shunt, through the shunt, and then through the battery terminal, 
And then off of here, the Dynon sensors will pick up amperage uh, for reading on the Dynon screen. I do have my two uh, flex separate um, ground wires. These are also protected and they go down, run along the bottom here. Let's see if I can get a better shot over here. And they tie to these two bracing uh, nuts, each have their own. So they're independently uh, grounded out there. So we got a good ground on the aircraft engine. I did also remote, this is not permanent here, I'm just getting this out of the way, but this is the oil pressure sensor. And we had it originally mounted there, but uh, due to Dynon recommendations, they don't recommend mounting it directly to the engine for heat and vibration. So we've got some Adele clamps that should be here today, and we'll just spin a remote this up here, either to the firewall or up here somewhere, and then we will uh, get that sensor ran into the rest of that. I do also have a manifold pressure sensor that will be tapping into one of the manifold areas here, and then I've got some tubing and that goes into a sensor and goes down into the, uh, of course, into the main harness. Um, I'm finishing up. I originally punched this hole out with a punch, but it wasn't quite big enough. I really could have made this a lot bigger because the plates that cover it cover more than enough. So I finally got a grinder wheel for my drill. I'm going to open this up plenty big because we've got to get the ECU cables through that hole very gently without damaging anything. Once I get that main harness through there, I can then start getting all of my sensor wires through and basically get all the sensor wires on the inside of the firewall area so I can start then laying out things for, for that. Inside the cockpit, <clears throat> we've got uh, our console, just kind of doing some layout with the console right now. Um, I do have the, uh, the brake lines started at the front here. We're going to be getting that parking brake in. We're basically doing the standard... Uh, uh, super duty brake package that uh, AS Flight Lines put together. Um, that's on their website right now. You can see that. You can purchase that. Basically, comes down from the brake lines, whether you do double or single. Comes to a, uh, a brake valve, continues on, goes out the bottom of the plane, comes out the bottom of the plane, runs down the gear legs, and provides uh, with, you with brakes. Now, the, due to the fact that I do have the baggage pod. I will be able to basically conceal all of my cabling. I've got a lot of aircraft cabling, sensors, and brake lines that will be on the bottom in a channel, but they'll be nicely hidden because I have the complete baggage pod. So that's gonna keep it nice and clean on the outside, as well as cleaning up the inside and not having a bunch of stuff running through the cockpit here. So that's one positive thing with that. Um, other than that, um, jumping back into things here, I still need to get this bushing back here loosened up. Um, this, this way here is fine. This way here, I've got way too much friction. So I got to make sure that's nice and loosened up. And then I'll get uh, the turnbuckles and everything installed on there. Start working on uh, elevator cables and things like that. So slowly coming along, um, I guess, like I said, trying to get this uh, engine stuff wrapped up. I've been waiting on a few different things there. Um, and then uh, once we start getting all the wires from here, inside of the cockpit, then I can feel like I'm actually going to start to accomplish something with getting the interconnects and starting to hook up switches and getting batteries positive up and, and all that good stuff. So that is where we're at with that. Now tomorrow I'll be taking uh, my two tanks over to the welder and we'll be getting these uh, fuel transducer bungs welded in. They basically go right down to that top lip right there. So it's a nice flush mount. Uh, and then what that allows us to do is have this transducer, which will basically be kind of up in the front here like this, and provide us with a very accurate fuel uh, sensing. Now, one thing you got to keep in mind is that the holes on this are not spaced exactly the same. So you have to make sure that when before this bung gets welded in, that we orientate the screw hole pattern, as you can see here, they're not lining up there, so I have to rotate this until I find the orientation where all of the screws line up. And it's right about there. Okay, now you can see all the screws line up. So that's the case where we're gonna have to have the wire facing the inboard side uh, so that the wiring will go the right direction. So I need to make sure and let the welder know that this cap 
has a left, right, front, back to it so that we can get those screw holes to line up. Otherwise, if he just welds it in, however, the holes are not gonna line up and it will be cattywampus. So I did get a uh, quick little diagram from uh, Viking on that. Of course, we're kind of looking at this upside down and backwards, but basically it's opposite the fuel cap. It's three, three inches back from the leading edge and four inches from the left uh, side there or the would be the inboard side. So I've got a mark right here. So they're gonna cut that hole, get that welded in for me. And then those uh, fuel bungs basically weld in and then they drop in and seal with a simple o-ring and bolts and they're basically flush enough that you don't have to have any kind of a cap on the top of your wing or anything so that should be real nice and clean might as well throw a quick update on the panel as well uh, this was another thing i had working on a um, couple things with the panel of course we're cutting this out it's kind of skeletonizing it and then going to be doing uh nut plates on here. I was experimenting a little bit with a couple different things. Here I got some not flush ones here. I'm gonna be taking those out. Also, uh, the bottom line, you can't put nut plates in because you've got the cabin frame there. So I'm gonna to have to just abandon the nut plates and go with uh, some threaded uh, screws in that bottom bar. I think I can get some corner nut plates in here, but these three bottom ones, we're gonna to have to go with uh, threaded screws um, and then the rest will be nut plates. So I'm gonna get this cut out. Um, I'm gonna probably just use my jigsaw. I think I can a, get a nice cut, get the skeleton cut out. I still wanna put that brace in here just to beef up on the, uh, the Dynon side. And then uh, we'll get this uh, riveted up or at least temporarily drilled up on the bottom so we can start kind of getting the panel set in place and starting to figure out where wires need to go for the main panel. All right, guys, well, I hope I provided a, just a quick update again. It's just a quick update. Um, we're going to jump into back the full workflow here. Like I said, on some of these small projects we're talking about. Uh, sorry, it took a little bit of delay there. Uh, again, um, we're going to get back at it. So appreciate you sticking around. Thanks for watching. Make sure you like and subscribe. If you got questions, leave them down below. Let me know where you guys are at in your projects. And uh, it's uh, another year coming up fast. You know, we're in November now, and I started this project in last August, so I hope to be a lot further than I was, but you know, things happen, and uh, you gotta do things right, and I think in the long run, this is gonna be an awesome project when it's totally done, and I'm looking forward to it. So I hope you guys are building your dreams. I hope you're building your, your kit. I hope you're thinking about building a kit. Um, just get out there and do it, man. You gotta do it. You gotta learn. Sometimes you learn the hard way, but uh, in the end, we're gonna have some cool aircraft to fly around, and it's an awesome community. And I appreciate you guys watching. Again, Adam, Aeroworks Workshop. We'll talk to you on the next one.